travel cameras are now better than ever. You can finally get a camera as convenient as your phone and still get the quality and specs of a pro camera. Otherwise, you might pick up a great camera that simply isn't designed for travel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the best cameras for travel for different budget levels and for different types of shooters. Also, I'll leave links down below for the best pricing on all the cameras we talk about today. So the first camera on this list is perfectly designed for travel, but also for vlogging and on the go shooting. And that is the Sony ZV E10. The design of the ZV E10 is meant to be ultra minimalist with a single button to go between photo, video, and slow motion. And there's a separate button for video recording and taking photos. And with this design, it's a really convenient camera to always keep on you and take quick photos or videos while traveling. And one feature that I absolutely love about this camera is the built-in three capsule microphone. This is going to give you super solid audio right in camera, even in loud environments. And with this, you'll be able to keep your camera small and nimble for travel, but you won't have to spend extra money to buy an external microphone. But this audio does have a trade-off. In the ZV-E10, there is no viewfinder. So depending on your shooting style, you may not want a camera without a viewfinder. I know the viewfinder is extremely important for some photographers. But if that sounds like you, I have something for you later in this list that might be more your style. And the ZV-E10 also has a side articulating screen, not only for self-recording, but this also gives you the ability to use touch autofocus. And speaking of autofocus, the autofocus in the ZV-E10 is easily 10 out of 10, despite this being a camera that's a few years old, the Sony autofocus is simply ahead of the entire industry. And even in an older camera like this, you're going to get face and eye detection and the tracking for even fast moving objects is very reliable and sticky. Now, when it comes to actually shooting with the ZV-E10, it actually blows every other camera in this price range out of the water. It has a 24 megapixel sensor, which is pretty standard for a camera like this. This is enough resolution for printing out your travel photos and even cropping into your images without losing too much detail. But one thing that makes the ZV-E10 sensor special is that it's also really good in low light for both photos and videos. And when you're taking photos, you can shoot as fast as 11 frames per second with 14-bit RAW, which is perfect for travel and action shots. You can capture anything like walking, concerts, or just an ADHD dog. I have one. But one feature that most people don't know about in the ZV-10 is that it also has a really large frame buffer. It can shoot 116 JPEGs in a row or 46 RAW photos, which means this camera can shoot for a pretty long time. And the ZV-10 has a much larger frame buffer compared to the other cameras at this price point. And when it comes to video, the ZV-10 is just as impressive. It can shoot 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second, but the video is also downsampled from 6K. So you really get the detail and clarity of 6K but in a smaller, more manageable 4K file. And compared to other smartphones, this camera is absolutely going to blow all of them out of the water. And on top of that, this is a really great camera to also capture some epic travel slow motion clips. At full HD, it can also record at 60 frames per second for two times slow motion and 120 frames per second for five times slow motion. And if you're really serious about shooting some epic cinematic travel video, this camera also has S-Log3 and HLG color profiles that give you way more flexibility over your colors when editing. However, the ZV-10 is only an 8-bit camera, whereas newer cameras now have 10-bit color. But if you know what you're doing, you can still make this camera look very, very cinematic. Now, the one downside of the ZV-10 is that it does have a pretty small battery life. It's going to give you roughly an hour and a half of video and maybe a few hundred photos. If you're a casual shooter, this probably won't matter, but for anyone going on a long trip, I definitely recommend having a few spare batteries. So if you want a pocket-sized camera with design features that specifically make your life easier when traveling, like the built-in microphone, the ZV-10 is a great choice for both travel shooters and travel vloggers. Now, some of you guys may not care about your camera being pocket-sized, and maybe your focus is on shooting beautiful photos and videos while traveling and creating something a bit more artistic and professional. In that case, the next camera might just be for you, and that is the Canon R7. What makes the Canon R7 such a special camera is the sensor and processor combo. It actually has a 32 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is the second highest resolution APS-C sensor on the planet. And 32 megapixels is a ridiculous amount of resolution. It's more than enough for printing photos. And with that crazy amount of resolution, you can seriously crop into your photos and zoom in and see every little detail in your photos thanks to that 32 megapixel sensor. And the 32 megapixel sensor also has an additional benefit for video shooters that I'll mention later on. The R7 also has AI-based autofocus, which is pretty much set it and forget it. It will automatically track people, animals, and cars all by itself because it already has the data inside the camera to know how that subject moves around 
and how it should best track it for autofocus. With this, you get an ultra-reliable autofocusing system that is perfect for both casual users, serious photographers, and above all, perfect for travel. You are never going to miss a shot. Now, in terms of shooting, the R7 has some serious horsepower. It can shoot at a ridiculous 15 frames per second in mechanical shutter mode and 30 frames per second in electronic shutter mode, and 30 frames per second is as fast as video. So it's pretty much impossible to miss your photo with this camera when shooting electronic shutter. And on top of that, it also has a really large frame buffer of 224 JPEGs or 51 RAW photos, meaning you can shoot for a pretty long time and capture the entire action without worrying about any kind of slowdown. And remember when I said the 32 megapixel sensor also had an additional benefit for video? Well, when it comes to video, the R7 shoots at 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second, but it's also downsampled from the entire 32 megapixel sensor, giving you 7K resolution of detail and clarity, but in a smaller, more manageable 4K file. And that's basically getting double the resolution and clarity of a regular 4K video. And the R7 also does 4K at 60 frames per second for two times slow motion. However, the 4K 60 is not downsampled, but it also has full HD at 60 frames per second and full HD at 120 frames per second, giving you pretty much every frame rate you could possibly want for video. And this is going to not only be a great travel camera, but you could easily use this for other professional work outside of traveling. And if you're someone that wants to create cinematic videos, it also has C-Log3 color profile that's going to give you more cinematic colors, but with 10-bit color, it's also going to give you way more flexibility than the 8-bit ZV-E10. Now, in terms of design, the R7 isn't exactly a pocket-sized camera, but it's still a pretty compact camera overall and much smaller than most DSLRs. It also has great ergonomics and a phenomenal user interface, which is what Canon cameras are known for. They're extremely user-friendly and really easy to figure out, even without a manual. And the R7 also has a side articulating screen with touch autofocus, so you could technically vlog with this camera, even though it wasn't designed for it. One feature that I know photographers are going to love is the electronic viewfinder. It has a really fast refresh rate and with very fluid motion, so it's really easy to track moving subjects just using the viewfinder. And the R7 has a really, really hefty battery. You're easily going to get several hours of videos and hundreds of photos on a single charge, making it a really great travel camera you could probably do an entire trip on a single charge. And Canon has made two really terrific travel lenses for this camera, the 18 to 150 and the 24 to 250. It's going to give you both a wide shot and a super zoom shot in one lens. And the 18 to 150 lens is also relatively affordable. The Canon R7 is one of those few cameras that really has no downsides. And when paired with the right lens, it's a very solid travel camera. If you're looking for a travel camera with serious horsepower that you won't have to replace in a year or two, the R7 is almost a no-brainer. Now, it's pretty hard to top the Canon R7 as a travel camera, but there is one camera that actually does. And it does this not just by having better specs, but rather by doing something that no other camera in the camera industry can currently do. And that is the Fuji X-T5, the most cinematic and artistic travel camera. The X-T5 has a 40 megapixel APS-C sensor, which is the highest resolution APS-C sensor in the world. And with that 40 megapixel resolution, you get all the benefits of being able to print out your photos, crop into your images, and the sensor is surprisingly good in low light. But what makes the camera truly special as a travel camera are the colors. Inside the camera, you have built-in film emulations that allow you to shoot with different color palettes. And using different color palettes, you're able to get warm, vibrant colors to moody, cool tones. And even though the X-C5 can shoot raw photos, a lot of people just tend to shoot JPEGs because you're getting such amazing colors right in camera without any editing. And when it comes to shooting photos, the X-C5 shoots at a ridiculous 15 frames per second in mechanical shutter mode or 20 frames per second, which is a little bit slower than the Canon R7 in electronic shutter mode. Although in electronic shutter mode, it does have a 1.25 times crop. But what's really impressive is that the X-C5 can also shoot a thousand JPEGs in a row when shooting at 10 frames per second. And this is pretty much fast enough for most people. But if you wanna shoot at the full 15 frames per second mechanical shutter mode, you can actually get 119 JPEGs or 19 raw photos. It is a bit slower than the R7, but the colors are a lot better. And with that 40 megapixel sensor, the video quality in this camera is crazy. Not only does it shoot 4K, but it also shoots 6.2K at 24 and 30 frames per second. And you can even shoot 4K downsampled with the quality and detail of 6K, but in a smaller 4K file. Along with that, you can also shoot 4K or 2K resolution at 60 frames per second. 
and full HD mode up to 120 frames per second or 240 frames per second. Basically giving you any frame rate or any kind of use case you could possibly want with this camera. You've got good real-time footage and epic slow motion as well, making it a great travel camera for both casual users and professionals. And even though you have such amazing colors right in the X-T5, you still have F-Log1 and F-Log2 cinematic profiles and Fujifilm Eterna film emulation for more flexibility when it comes to color grading your footage. And the X-T5 also has 5-axis stabilization for extremely smooth handheld video. I was able to get almost gimbal-like results with this camera. But the one thing that I should mention about the X-T5 is the autofocus. It can be a little bit hit or miss. It does have face and eye detect, and in those scenarios, it does a very, very good job with tracking subject. And it also has AI subject detect modes for people, animals, and cars. And in those scenarios, it can be a little bit hit and miss when you have a fast moving subject or if it's looking at something it doesn't recognize like hands. But for the most part, if you're shooting people, shooting landscapes with a little bit of action, the autofocus will be just fine. Thankfully, it does have touch autofocus and a joystick to select your autofocus points. But the most impressive thing about the X-T5 has to be the body and design because it's unlike any other mirrorless camera out there. The bun layout in the style of this camera is more so a vintage camera from the 80s and 90s. With this, you get a shutter dial and an ISO dial at the top with the aperture being directly on the lens. But you still have the front command dial and the rear command dial like a most mirrorless cameras, so you don't have to use it like a vintage camera. But shooting this camera like a vintage style camera is a really satisfying experience, especially if you like to slow down and really take it all in when shooting photos while traveling. And the X-T5 is also weather sealed, so this camera can go anywhere you like. One thing to note is that the screen on the back is only a tilt screen. It is not a side articulating screen, so with this, it's not really an ideal vlogging camera and the internal audio is pretty lackluster. It's not really something I'd recommend as a vlogging camera. But on a positive note, the X-T5 does have a really superb battery life. You're going to get several hours of videos and at least 700 photos on a single charge, making this a really good camera, and you can also charge this with the USB-C port. Now, purely from a design perspective, the X-T5 is a gorgeous camera, and it's really just an eye-catching camera when traveling. It's a camera that you like holding. It's a camera you like using. If I was traveling, this is probably the camera I would take with me. You're going to get a high resolution sensor, amazing photos and videos, and best of all, it's a camera that's relatively well priced considering the horsepower in it. So if you want to make sure you get the best possible pricing on your X-T5, make sure to check out the links in the description down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.